If you're anything like me, I absolutely hate sewing granny squares together. So today I'm going to show you my three preferred methods for crocheting them together once they've already been made. The first technique I'm going to show you is how we single crochet our squares together to give this really pretty ridge on the front. Now you can also do this on the back if you prefer, but I think if you've got a textured join, it's nice to have it on the front of your work as it gives an extra little dimension and textural interest to your crochet squares. Pop a slip knot onto your hook. Now pick up your first two squares and we want to place them with the wrong side facing each other. So this is the back of my work and I'm just going to press the back of my work so that they're touching. So I have the right side of my granny squares facing out. Now line them up and I'm going to work into this initial chain space of your granny square. I'm just going to pop my hook straight in there, draw up a loop, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those first two loops. That's a single crochet. We've worked it through both chain spaces on both squares. Now holding your squares together, you want to line your stitches up and we're going to pick up the back loop of your first square, so just the back loop of that first stitch and then on the corresponding square that is behind you want to pick up what will be the front loop for you but is the back loop of that square, so the inside loop. You want to pick that one up there. So I've got the two inside loops and just create a single crochet. So I'm leaving the front loop on both squares unworked. Then move on to your next stitch, pick up the back loop of both. If you're working like this, it'll be the front loop of that back one, but don't get too befuddled. You just want to pick up the two inside loops, the loops that are closest to each other and work a single crochet. We're going to do this all the way up the side of your square. So on your third stitch, find its matching third stitch on the other square you're joining to, get the loops closest to each other and single crochet. Once you reach the corner space of your first two squares, just work in between, straight into that space, in between both of them and work a single crochet. So you have sandwiched your squares together all the way up. This is how it looks on the back. Then you want to pick up your next two squares exactly the same way, just pick them up. You want the inside to be on the inside, so the wrong side of the work, back of the piece, to be touching. And you want the right side, the bit you want to be the front, facing out. And move straight on to your next set of squares, into the chain spaces of the corners, work a single crochet. And just as you have, pick up these inside loops, ones closest to each other, and single crochet, all the way along. Once you've reached the end of your row, chain one, cut your yarn, leaving a long tail to weave in, pull that out, pull it tight, and your squares will be joined 
all along this way. Now to join the other way, rotate your squares, fold them again, so you have the wrong side facing in, and start the same process again. Slip knot onto your hook, place your hook into that chain space of your corner, draw up a loop, you have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both, first single crochet made. Then work your stitches exactly the same up this first square. And once you reach your little crossroads, single crochet into the chain space to connect that those two squares together then chain one and move directly onto your next two squares that chain one will straddle across your single crochet stitches from joining in the opposite direction just work straight into the next chain space then continue joining your squares. This is how it looks on the back. So if you wanted to do this join on the reverse, this is how it would look from the front but as I mentioned I personally think if you're going to do the single crochet and have that pretty ridge it's nice to have it on the front of your work if you don't like how that ridge with the single crochet looks we can do something incredibly similar but with a slip stitch so it gives a beautifully flat join this is how it looks on the back and this is how it looks on the front still super decorative but flat now to work with slip stitches, you want to ideally have your work flat. It's a bit easier to see what you're doing if we work with everything flat because you're going to want your working yarn underneath the squares as we go. And that's a bit more difficult to do when you're holding your pieces together. So just like before, we want to make a slip knot, but we're not going to put it onto our hook just yet. So just make your loose slip knot. Now we're going to be working into the back loop of the square closest to us and the back loop of the square opposite, which will technically be the front loop if you're looking at it. But don't befuddle yourself too much with which loop. We're going for the two loops that are closest to each other, these two inside loops. Those are the ones we're going to be working into. We're also going to work into the back loops or closest loops of the chains as well. I'm just going to rotate my work so I am working vertically just because that's a bit easier for me and I'm going to pop my hook, identify my two chains or however many chains you have, to pop my hook under the back loop and under the back loop on the same chain on the other side. I'm going to move those two squares out of the way for a minute. Then put the slip knot onto your hook and draw that loop through. Now with the working yarn underneath your squares, identify the next chain, back loop of that, and back loop of the corresponding square and draw your yarn through and do a slip stitch. Now you want your slip stitches to be nice and loose. Then move on to the next stitch inside loop or back loop and the same loop on the corresponding stitch and make a slip stitch. So you can see as we're working 
I'm pulling the yarn from underneath my squares. So I find it's easier to work flat on a table. So work all the way along, picking up the back loop of both stitches and working a slip stitch. Once you run out of stitches, pick up your chains as well. If you're working in the inside middle section of your blanket, you only need to pick up one of those chains if you've got two chains. So on the outside edge, you want to join them all. On the intersection sections, you only need to pick up half the amount of chains that you have because you'll get the other ones when we work back the other way. To move on to your next squares, Exactly the same, just pick up one back loop of one of the chains, if you have two chains, and slip stitch them together. Then pick up the back loops of all the stitches. Once you reach the other side, pick up back loops of your chains Chain 1 Cut your yarn Repeat the same on the other side Remember you want your working yarn underneath, so you're drawing it up. So you can see how the yarn is being pulled up. It's a bit trickier coming back this way, but persevere. Once you get close to the crossroads where you've already joined in the opposite direction, it does get a little bit fiddly, but just work with it, find what's comfortable for you. And then, because slip stitches do have a tendency to pull, especially if you are slightly tighter with your tension, to skip over this central pre-joined section, chain one, just to bridge that gap, and then continue as you were.
So you can see this join completely flat, really pretty. Now, if you don't want to be joining on the front and you want to join on the back, just wanted to show you how neat this join is when it's done in the same color as your squares, you can barely see it. We're going to do slip stitches, but from the back of the work. It is a really good way to join your granny squares together almost seamlessly when you join them at the back. And as I say, nice and flat. So to join with a slip stitch at the back, it's actually quicker and a little bit easier than doing it across the front. Make a slip knot, but don't put it on your hook just yet. We're going to pick up our squares, but this time we want the right side of the work to face each other. So you want the wrong side of your squares facing you as we work this slip stitch join. And we're going to be working into the front loop of the square nearest you and the back loop of the other square that we're joining to. So the two outside loops are the ones that we're going to be joining to for this. So you want to ignore these inside loops. So just pop your hook through your chains in the corner that slip knot back onto your hook and draw through a loop and the same again into the next two chains just want to pick up a loop I find this way is easier than doing the slip stitch on the front because you can hold your squares together and your working yarn is on the outside it's not underneath and needing to be pulled up and through and we're going to marry up our stitches and pick up the front loop of the square that is closest to you and the back loop of the square that's furthest away from you and just slip stitch keep your slip stitches nice and loose so these outside loops you want to ignore the inside loops and just gently slip stitch them together Don't forget your chains. And just as with the surface, the front joining method, in the central section, you only want to pick up one or half of your chains when you're going in one direction because you'll pick the other ones back up. Everything else about this technique with the chaining one at the crossroads, it all applies. The only difference on this one is we are just doing it on the back. So you would slip stitch all your squares together from the back, which gives a lovely flat seam there. So you can see even in doing these highly contrasting colors, you can't really see my stitches. And if you do it in the same color yarn, it's invisible. You can barely see that I have joined, especially on the back. This is definitely my favorite of the three. Which of these three methods is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments section below. And until next time, happy crocheting.